Hi, my friend, and cheers! Today is International Coffee Day. It is also October 1st. Woohoo! It is fall, fall, fall. It's October. Uh, our weather is feeling like that. So, coffee day is today, and I am going to go and get myself a pumpkin spice latte. Yes, I am. I don't usually drink those. Uh, it's been a while since I had one, but I am going to celebrate the beginning of October with one and coffee day, you know? They did a free coffee thing like about a couple days ago. I'm not sure why, because when I look online, today was coffee day, but that's okay. Every day is coffee day here. So let's get to it. I am going to talk my top three jelly roll tips today because we are starting the Holly Jolly Reese, and today is all about prep work. So first let's talk about the jelly roll, which are a fabulous pre-cut. Um, this one is from my friend Bev McCulloch of Flamingo Toes. This is also her pattern that we're doing, which is so darn cute. Uh, I am doing the whole quilt with her fabric line called Christmas Adventure. And I also then am doing some sample wreaths that I'll show you one when we get to that uh, with another, with a fall fabric line. So first of all, with the jelly roll, uh, I put out a post and said, what are your tips? And <laughs> my top tip and all of your top tip is to use a lint roller to get rid of the fuzzies. So let me tell you about the fuzzies. These are, most manufacturers have theirs um, cut using a machine that makes pinked edges, you know, little, little ridges, and those create fuzz. So we want to get rid of that fuzz before we start working with it. Otherwise, you will be wearing the fuzz. The floor will be wearing the fuzz. The dogs and the cats will be wearing the fuzz. So lint rollers are your number one tool for this. Let me just show you. Now pre-cuts, this is uh, two and a half inch strips, 42 pieces is this, industry, no, this one's 40 pieces. Some might be 42 pieces. That's kind of the industry standard. There are jelly rolls that are cut by hand by some companies. So you do have to read everything when you buy one to see what you're getting, uh, to know what you're getting and, and be an informed buyer. So this jelly roll uh, has not been, some of them come, a lot of times they come shrink wrapped with plastic. So then they stay tidy in the store and they don't get you know roughed up. Uh, so you take that off, but we're gonna go, see, just go over the edge like this and we have got a lot of lint. That's just one side and you go through, go through all of it. And then I, I ended up on my practice one. This was a lighter color fabric, but believe me, these are full. I did three of them. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through and do, do that while we're watching. But once I do these until they're not, you know, not getting so totally filled up, then what I want to do, we're still on tip number one, which is to get the fuzzies off. Then what I want to do is open this up and I will go outside. I'm going to pop a picture up here in a second, but let's first come up. So what I will do is, will be to go outside and shake this. I will open it up totally. So whoops, there's one fell off. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. So here's just going two sections, but I will go out and just shake this like mad outside <laughs> after I've done a lot of the rolling. That way it sort of gets off the more of the loose stuff that might be hung up. It doesn't take that long to do this. You do a couple rollers, take it outside and shake it, and then you're ready to, you're ready to rock and roll, ready to come in. And you're, now your jelly rolls, what I do is now I have jelly rolls that are easier and clean, cleaner to work with. They don't have so much fuzz on them. That way we're not getting it everywhere in the house. So that's tip number one. The second tip, there's three main tips and I am going to then tell you some uh, extra things that I did and tested and then I'll give you one or two tips from uh, the readers here uh, the, uh, that, uh, that you gave. Okay, so tip number two is to check the size of the strips. They really, you know, there can be times when they don't come at two and a half. I am not gonna focus today on all the ways to adjust that. 
but let me first just talk about testing it. Then I'll, then we'll go on. Okay, so that means just checking a strip. Pull a strip off, uh, and let me get down so you can see. So if I pull a strip off, and I want to test that it is two and a half, this is a Riley Blake strip, and I put my ruler on top, and I will see that it is a two and a half inch strip. Good, so we're good to go, we're good to sew. Now what do you do if it's not two and a half? And it does happen, all of you. If you ever ask anybody about a jelly roll, that will be, besides the fluff, getting the fluff off, the second thing everybody talks about is the size of it because many people have run into ones that are a little bit different. Uh, so, if it's barely different, you can adjust your seam allowance while you're cutting the strips to get them uh, to the right size. If you have one that's wildly off, like somebody said it was like a quarter inch too small, well, you're gonna need to use that in a project that is not specific to two and a half inch strips. Like you could do like a rail fence or something where it's not going to matter because uh, you will adjust the pattern for for that size. But something that's just a 16th off, um, 32nd off, I think you can sort of adjust it by your sewing or just when you trim up the square, you can maybe trim a little bit off, you know, and mess around with it like that. Personally, I do not go and adjust strips. Like I have read that people will get a strip that's a tiny bit too wide and they'll go and cut all the edges off. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of buying it. The purpose of buying it is that you open it and use it. If you're going to take the time to, on each of the strips to cut off sides, you might as well just buy fat quarters and just cut your own strips. Um, some people are very particular. Some of you are extremely detail oriented and something that is not 100% perfect, which is hard in fiber, by the way. Uh, fiber moves, it's not a piece of wood. Uh, it has some stretch, but anyways, that's another story. Um, you might find that it's easier for you to cut your own strips because you can have the accuracy that you require for your work. Um, okay. The other point is, the other thing, the other point, that's funny. Uh, there are little pinked edges. Let me get one that you can see. Okay. So you can see, right, there's pinked edges. For the most part, I find that you will measure the two and a half has to be to the outside of the pinked edge because the whole concept of this two and a half inch strip is to use the whole thing. So that means the outside of the edge. You aren't trim, you, you aren't, these aren't made to, to, for you to, to bring them home and trim them. That's not the concept for a pre-cut. The pre-cut's made so that you just go ahead and use it. All right, so that was tip number two. Just check the size so that you know what you're dealing with and you can make decisions based on that. Uh, the next thing is, my, my third tip, is to have some sort of a method of hanging them to sort them while you're working. Because often, particularly like in our pattern that we're working with, you're going to want to sort these into a particular order. Like I don't want, they, they generally come, the, the bundles, like, okay, well here, you can see like there came like the white, the red, the pink, then the red, and then here, We've got, you know, all the red, then, whoops, all the red, then all the green, then all the aqua. So the, the strips and most layer cakes and um, charm packs, any pre-cuts, come co sort of color, co color um, coordinated. So they put all the same colors together or they might put all the same style together, but that isn't how you're going to use it. So the third, my third big tip for jelly rolls is to use uh, something to hang them to sort them because I think that it's easier to hang them up. I used to have a drying rack, uh, but it, it sort of, it was really old. I had it from like college <laughs> and it was old wooden drying rack and it got a little rickety and, and we don't have it anymore. But I will use um, hangers so that I can just hang strips on it and then sort them. So if I wanna do like one block, I could just sort of put the strips on here to get, get a sense for it. Um, and that's one of the things that I do. So those are my three top tips. Now I do wanna show you a couple other things that I did. A lot of people will talk about, should I wash these? Because you know, they're not washed. These strips are not washed in advance. They are you know, cut off of the manufacturer's big rolls and then cut into these pre-cuts. 
So what I did is I took this strip here, so I want you to see it, and I took it to the sink and very carefully just wet it, and then I took it out and I did not scrunch it, I didn't do anything. I took it exactly like this, soaking wet, and I clipped it and let it dry. So if you love to wash your fabric, you can see that it isn't really even, I haven't pressed it, I did not press it. I just wanna show exactly what would happen. So there you can see, it might, it needs a press because it does have a little wave from being uh, rinsed, but it turned out really nice. The size did not change. So there was no change in the size from rinsing that. The other thing that many of you have mentioned is that you like to starch your fabric. Many of you like to starch your fabric. Well, it's a little hard to starch your, um, well, starch your strips, but I decided I would test it, and I have never done that before. So I did the same concept as washing it. I took the, uh, the spray starch. Now, there are liquid starches, and there are other products that are not quite starch. You know, we're not going into that today. We're just talking about using something. So I took this, and I sprayed it so that it was pretty much soaking wet, once again did not touch it, took it and let it dry on its own. So now you can see for this one, once again, it's not pressed yet, but it is, you know, it's a little, you know, wavy, so it would take a nice press, but I was impressed that it was pretty straight and it also did not shrink. Uh, this is a Moda line, this particular one. So you wanna test one, you know, whatever you're doing, test one. Don't do the whole roll before you've tested one to be sure that there wasn't any shrinkage or any major warping because every fabric manufacturer is going to be a little bit different. So there is my test that I did. Now the next thing is I have some of your uh, responses <laughs> to what you do. And I gotta be sure I read these right. So Quilton, Quilton Reed, uh, her response to her, her tip rather, Quilton Reed's tip was clean your machine occasionally while working with this because the jelly rolls clean, create a lot of fluff. So this stuff here is there's probably still, even after you roll it and then shake it out a little bit, there's gonna be little bits of fluff. And so that I think that's a fabulous tip is to clean your machine, check it out, be sure that you're not getting a little extra lint going on because you're working with this. A mountain Bear Quilting's tip is don't pull on the strip when sewing because it might stretch and cause it to curve. Uh, you know, that is, these are all cut on a machine, so you are not, you know, figuring out all of the straight of grain stuff. So they might be just slightly off grain and maybe they will stretch a little bit. I find that uh, for the most part, they're just totally fine. Bev's here is just wonderful. I don't see that, but every manufacturer is different. So that is just always a good thing to do when you're using strips. Sharina says, and I love this tip, Sharina, don't forget to mix and match the different jelly rolls or to leave strips out that don't fit the colors you want in your project. Yes, you have control over this jelly roll. So if you are playing with this one here of Bev's and you really don't want pink in yours, then just go to your stash and switch out the pink and put in some more red or some more green if you want that. If you don't want the white ones, a lot of times, you know, that it's a bright spot, so you might not want that. So you could take that out. And then, or if you have two jelly rolls, you know, from two different um, lines, you can mix and match across those. Several people, including jo Janice, suggested buy two jelly rolls if you don't know your project. If you don't have a project in mind, but you know you want to do a jelly roll project, if you buy two, you can make a bigger size quilt in the end, since you don't have a project in mind already. Sawdust and Sangria says, this has this tip that I did not try, but I think it'd be interesting to one to try. Before unrolling the jelly roll, spray it with starch on both sides and then let it dry. You know, so just leave it sit there and dry. Uh, you probably put it on its end. Afterwards, she runs the lint roller over it to pick up any extra fluff. And she finds that that seals the edges and reduces stray threads. Um, then she'll unroll it and iron the strips before she starts working. So those were some other interesting tips. I would like to try that one on just starching the whole thing. Okay, our project. You will need your jelly roll, 
Jolly Roll. For the Holly Jolly Reese, I suggest that you open the pattern and read through it so that you understand the whole process and how it is going to flow. Uh, next Friday, we will go through the steps of making a wreath. This week is getting your things ready. Uh, these are the other companion fabrics. When you make the wreath, I'm going to show you. Here's one I did with the pumpkin, uh, and I think it's called pumpkin and spice fabric from Joanna Figueroa. So there is, this is, this block is so fun to do. It is totally fun to do. Uh, I love it. And I've got this, this is the middle part, like the two of that red square is on point. That is what fabric I'll be using on this one versus the really dark bow. On here, the bow is red and that piece is red. So I'm just going to do maybe four of these and use them as my sample as we're going along if I need to you know, show another one. Okay, so you're gonna get your jelly roll ready. You could go and sort these. You could start sorting the strips into the order that you think you want for your wreath. Uh, if you're going to prep any of these and try it, if you wanted to try rinsing or starching the strips, it is coffee day and it is wreath making time. So you're gonna make a wreath and we're gonna have a lot of fun. So I love you, Mwah. see you online.